Today, I'm gonna go through exactly how to set up your prompting and how it should be formatted and how the different aspects of the prompt actually impact it so much. So you're probably wondering, who is this random guy? My name is actually John, John Joshin, and I've worked with over 50 different companies in a multitude of different industries, helping them from real estate to tree companies, to dentistries, to many other industries. And what I'm gonna go through is exactly how to set everything up step-by-step step in Vapi so you can optimize all of your client profiles or your own profiles and your own accounts yourself. Perfect, so let's go right into it for you guys. We have five different sections that we categorize our prompting in, at least for the Vapi aspect. So I'm gonna go through the broad overview of them all and what that would actually look like. And then from there, I'm gonna actually show you step-by-step step, full descriptions on what they actually mean, what they should entail, and the full overview. So for starters, right here, we have the five different sections. One of those is gonna be the actual role. So you can see right here, the role is who they actually are. The next one is the tasks, which is what they do. The next one is gonna be specifics, which is how they do it. And then we have two more at the bottom, which is gonna be the context. And then we have the actual rules. So those are the different aspects of the prompt that we actually kind of build out for our customers. So at least for the start, the first one is gonna be the roles. So the roles is who they are, what that actually entails. And you can see right here, for us, it's just kind of explaining the role. It's telling them like who you are as the AI robot. So for example, you are an experienced salesman for a real estate company called Realty Group. Very broad, very simple. And then your role is to actually schedule the estimates onto the calendar. From there, we have the tasks. So the task is actually set in stone on saying, what is your job? So for us in this scenario, the job is your task is to converse with the customer, figure out their actual needs, solve their pain points, and then set in an actual appointment with the customer, right? So that's the task aspect. And then the specifics we're gonna go through, which is how they do it. So actually actual prompting, that's the script of Vapi, and that's going through step-by-step step of what you want the AI to say, what you want it to go through, what you want it to qualify for. So that's kind of what we have right here. The other two parts that we have is the context, which is giving it information on the business. You can also give it information on the customer, any other information. So we have the business, we have what we do in this one. The last one is gonna be the actual rules. So this will give rules to Vapi and tell it what it should do, what it should not do, all really dependent on different case scenarios that you're gonna be using. All right, perfect. So now that you guys get the general idea from that prompt that I showed you guys, this is going to be going absolutely in depth on each of the different sections. So the first one is the role, as you guys saw. So the role defines the actual identity and the actual persona of the assistant. So this is gonna go and tell it, hey, this is who you are, this is how you should act. So if you wanna tell it to act as a specific person or maybe have some specific humor uh, in comparison to someone else, you can give it that specific information. So this is where you're gonna go fully in depth, tell it everything, tell it what to do, tell it who it should be, all that different information. And here's an example, as you guys probably saw in the prompting. So the example is, you're an experienced salesperson for a real estate company called Realty Group. So that's a basic example of it, but right here you can see, we're actually telling it, hey, you're an experienced salesperson. So that's the definition, that's where the role and identity come in. And it's the experienced salesperson aspect that we told it of what to act like. So the purpose, obviously, is just to understand the nature of the interaction, understand who it is, what it's gonna be talking to, and kind of what it should act like. So the next part is the actual task aspect. So this is telling it, hey, this is your job in this scenario, and you need to do this job, and you need to do it correctly, right? So it outlines the primary objectives or the functions of the AI and what it's actually expected to do and how it's expected to perform, right? So it's not the actual how. It's not telling it, hey, this is step by step. This is telling it the broad idea on this is what you need to get. This is all the information that you need to go through, right? So one example that we have is, for example, converse with the customer, 
figure out their actual needs, solve their pain points, and then set the appointment in, right? So that's a brief example of what it should be doing as like the actual task aspect. So this outlines the primary objectives, as it said, by telling it, hey, figure out their actual needs, solve their pain, and then set in the appointment, right? So that's telling it exactly what it should do and how it should act in those scenarios. And the purpose of this is to make sure that the AI is actually goal oriented, because if it's not goal oriented, it doesn't know the actual end goal, then it won't focus or target specific tasks, right? Because you can tell it in the prompt that you can tell it in the script, hey, go by this script and follow it step by step, but it won't understand and say, hey, I know I need to be achieving this part of it, or I need to achieve this to make sure that the end result is achieved. So this part is the actual step-by-step -step actions of the details and what the actual AI should be doing step-by-step -step during the conversation. So we're telling it, hey, this is step one, this is step two, all the way until the very last step, however many steps you guys have. So it's very situational on how you actually build it out, but you're telling it, do this if this happens, do this if this doesn't happen, all the way through, right? So for example, we're telling it, identify the user by his name, figure out if it's actually him, introduce yourself as this name with this company. You're telling it step by step exactly what it's supposed to do. You can throw in the qualifying questions in there to make sure that it step by step qualifies in the correct order. You can make sure it books the appointment. You can make sure it pulls the correct information and informs the customer on that information. Whatever you need it to do, you tell it step by step, this is what you're going to be doing for us. And this just allows the AI to have clarity and an actual understanding of what the conversation be, should be about and what it should be doing exactly on the dot. The next part is the actual context part of it. So the context provides background information about the business, about the customer, any context that the AI might need just to fulfill in the conversation. So for example, we put in, we're a realty group located in Atlanta, Georgia. Right? And we provide real estate services to the Atlanta area. So that's telling it, hey, this is exactly who we are. This is the information about us. This is where we're located. This is our company phone number. This is the name of the actual realtor that is doing service providers with us. All the different information about the business. And that's just the business part. You're also going to want to put in the customer information. So whether you have their name in there, their email, their phone number, all the different questions they fill out on Facebook because obviously they're filling out a form most of the time and you want to fill in the bot with as much information as you possibly can about the company or the actual customer, right? And what this does is it enhances the relevance of the interaction by grounding the AI's responses and allows it to understand the specific setting, specific scenario of what it's actually communicating about. And the last, but also pretty much most important aspect of this is the rules. So the rules will tell it what to do or what not to do. Generally speaking, you're not going to want to say, do not use it. Do not do something. Obviously it definitely works, but you're going to want to tell it the opposite. You're going to want to tell it. So for example, we have in here, do not overly use, overuse the word. I understand you usually don't want to use that. You want to say, Hey, do use these different variations, right? Or for example, only offer two time slots when booking the appointment. You want to only offer the positive observations that you want it to actually go through, right? And this just ensures actual compliance. It makes sure it's following the tone, making sure it follows the actual scenario and doesn't say random stuff. So for example, some other use cases for this is making sure that it says different times, times, right? If it says the time as in like, oh, oh, this, that, instead of Monday, May 21st. You get the idea. You want to tell it what to do, how to say it, when to do it. These are the actual rules of the prompt. So after watching that entire video, you should have a perfect understanding of how to format your prompts and all of your client prompts for any industry. And we gave you all the different examples on how to use it for yourself, for your specific custom use cases. And not only that, what we're doing is we're also having an exclusive free school community, as you can see right here, and we have all these different courses that we're going to be dropping and that we're going to be adding over the next couple weeks. So feel free to join in that school community and we're going to show you all of our special techniques 
on what we're doing to help other customers ourselves.